To balance this equation, calcium chloride plus sodium phosphate yields calcium phosphate plus sodium chloride. Let's count the atoms up. On the reactant side, we have one calcium, two chlorines, three sodiums, and then rather than separate the phosphorus and the oxygens, I've kept them together because this is an ion, this is the phosphate ion. So I'm going to keep those together because I have one here and then I have PO4 on the other side. So I'm just going to say I have one of those. Over on the product side, I have three calciums. And then let's just go in the same order. I have the one chlorine, the one sodium, and then I have the phosphate here. And this two applies to the whole thing. So I have two phosphates. So I'm going to put a two here. This is going to make it a lot easier to balance for us most of the time. I think first I see the calciums there unbalanced. I'm going to put a three in front of the calcium chloride. So one times three, that'll give me three of the calciums. Those are balanced. And then two times the three, that'll give me six chlorines. Hmm, okay. Let's try to fix the chlorines next. We can see that we have one here and six here. We can put a six in front of the NaCl. So let's do it. One times six, that equals six chlorine atoms. And then one times six, that equals six sodium atoms. Let's put a two in front of the sodium phosphate. So now three times two, that gives us six, those are balanced. And now we have the phosphate here, one of them times the two, that'll give us two phosphates. And this equation's balanced. So by keeping the phosphates together as a group, it just makes it a lot easier to balance. Otherwise you've got quite a few different elements there you have to deal with. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for CaCl2 plus Na3PO4 yields Ca3PO4 two plus NaCl. And thanks for watching.